Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, out on another walk. This time I'm in Somerset. I'm in Western Zoyland and I'm here at St Mary's the Virgin. Now, as you know, I often go around looking at uh, churches and exploring the towers, climbing up to the top and finding out the history. Well, this time it's not the tower and it's not the ancient history of the church. I'm here because of a battle. Now, to help me understand that, I'm meeting up with George Keith. Hello, George. Hello, Richard. Now, George, you're not involved in the battle itself, but you're very much involved with setting up the visitor centre yeah. of the battle, which is inside the church, which we're going to go and have a look at shortly. Yes, please do. Yeah. But before of that, which battle am I talking about? Well, we're talking about the Battle of Sedgemoor that took place on the 6th of July, 1685. Yes. And it actually took place here, in and around Western Zoyland. Now, it's a battle which was not particularly well understood locally. So, in around 2008, some local residents got together and formed a, a, a charitable trust with the intention of informing people and educating people about the battle. I became involved in 2009, just after arriving in the village, and we debated what we could do. So, the first thing we decided to do was to film a reenactment of the battle which was taking place in 2010 and the aim was to use that film as the cornerstone of a visual display. Right. Um, we managed to obtain some local funding and our visitor centre was born with essentially the film I just mentioned and some posters. Um, and that was it for a number of years and we were quite satisfied with what we'd done visitor numbers were pretty good we get some very good you know rep reports from visitors um, but then the church itself needed some considerable re refurbishment and a lot of money needed to be spent right in excess of 600 700 thousand pounds and of course the church authorities reluctant to spend that amount of money for a footfall a congregation in the low numbers yes and so Collectively, we hit upon the idea of creating a visitor centre in the church by creating a little sitting, sitting area with tables, a little kitchen area, installing toilets, and creating a brand new Battle of Sedgemoor exhibition. And we're going to go into the church now and have, yes. a, have a look at what you have achieved. So we'll come in. I'll follow you, George. Okay. So we should just say, as we go through this, um, the Battle of... Sedgemoor was involving um, James Scott, who was the bastard son of Charles I, who was trying to uh, stake a claim to the English crown in, uh, instead of James II, yes. who was Charles's brother. Yes. And as a result of that, it, it, was, it, was, it was doomed to failure anyway, because he was a bastard son. But um, there was a rising in the West Country and uh, people went to his support. Yes, that is true. And that's, that's more or less what happened. And then the battle ensued. And as a result of that, um, un well, unfortunately for um, the Duke of Monmouth, uh, it all went pear-shaped. And uh, in the end, he was actually beheaded at the town. Yes, he was. As, as a result of it. But um, I'm not telling the story of the whole battle because really you need to come to the visitor centre to find out more. So we're now in this remarkable church. Now the church itself has its own unique story, but we'll save that for another video. I'll come back. But I want to have a look at the hard work that you've done in um, putting together the visitor centre and also the connection of why here, because after the battle, significant events happened yes. actually in the church yes. where we're standing now. Yes. So lead us around to the um, well, lead us the, around the, to the, the battle. The battle started at about 11 p.m. on the night of July the 5th when Monmouth was uh, garrisoned in Bridgewater and was aware that the Royalist troops were stationed here in Western Zoyland. So he, briefly, without telling the whole story, he decided he was going to undertake a night raid. Yes. Uh, ultimately it failed. At the end of the battle, which itself lasted about six hours, the prisoners were brought inside this church. Yes. 
bloody, bloody tired, weary. Some died, yeah. some were hanged outside in the church grounds. But this is what makes this place significant. Because as you said, not only is this place a significant religious building in its own right, but yeah. it also has historical significance. Because we are standing precisely where prisoners were held. Yes. Before many of them were tried by the Judge, infamous yes. Judge Jeffries at and, the bloody assizes. At the bloody assizes, yeah. So looking here now, as we can see, that this looks absolutely um, startling. I mean, it's a beautiful display, one has to say, with all this wonderful wood and the displays. But it's taken a lot of effort yes. to get to a stage where you've got touchscreen um, monitors and information boards and video. Um, and not only that, some, uh, a mannequin with his, uh, yes. with his cannon. Yes, Dutch gunner. A Dutch gunner, yes. oh right. Um, yes, as I said outside, the, the cost of refurbishing the church was going to be something like £700,000. A new visitor centre was seen as the mechanism by which we get people to come into the church. Yes. So the church authorities were very, very supportive of this. Um, it took a long time to secure the funding, both for the church and for this exhibition. Uh, we submitted a lot of applications, had them turned down for various reasons. Ultimately, we were successful with getting the necessary funds f via, uh, sorry, from the European Union via Somerset County Council. Right. And once we'd secured the funds, we were able to proceed. So this exhibition and the rest of the visitor centre was officially opened in March of last year. Oh, right. OK. So we haven't been going that long. No. What have we seen? We've seen an increase in visitors number, visitor numbers, uh, an increase in donations, because we are a charity. Yes. We don't charge for right. people to come. Whatever money we take in donations goes into the maintenance of the exhibition and hopefully further upgrade. Yes. And towards the church to maintain the church. And we're very careful to say we're not a museum, but what we have, we, these are replica muskets, for example. Right. But they are accurate. Yes. Yeah, no, magnificent um, replicas, to, so that you get an idea as you're looking around yes. the exhibition of the type of weaponry, the dress yes. that people would yes. have been wearing, um, and the technology that was available at that time. Uh, and, and of course, when you're wielding one of these things mm. across um, the fields, which may have been a bit boggy, um, and of course it was at night time, and you've got these reens, which are these um, drainage ditches, drainage ditches mm. which of course the, uh, the Somerset levels are famous for, because they would have been at one time um, covered in marshland. Mm. Um, you, get, you get the sense of how difficult it would have been. Yes, and at night, of course. And at night, yes. in, in an area that um, Monmouth himself wasn't, was unfamiliar with, mm. and relying on locals to get him to where he needed to be, in silence, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> which, with horses and everything else. So, you, so then you, you start to get that sense of how difficult and, and really how stupid <laughs> the idea was. But of course, you know, it was the times it was in. Yeah. Um, and so that's it. So you've got here, obviously, information boards. You've got some fa fascinating um, what touch try, screen. What we try to do is to tell the story. Yes. From why did the battle occur? Who was involved? When did the battle occur? So these touch screen displays will take you through from the moment that Monmouth arrived with a small handful of troops at Lyme Regis. Yes his journey through the West Country, trying to assemble more and more supporters, encountering Royalist troops who were shadowing him all the way, until his eventual arrival here in Western Zoyland, or in his case, in Monmouth's case, in Bridgewater, and then the battle itself. Yes. Um, but also we go on to say, what happened after the battle? Yes. Because as a result of the, the bloody assizes, you know, many people were killed, some were acquitted, but many, several hundred, were transported to the colonies. And mainly, you, and you've mainly got, you've got lists, haven't you, of, yes, of we have. um, the yes. descendants yes, or the have. names of the original people who went? And yes, we have. We've got. We touch the screen here. Hopefully, the names that we have to date of those who were transported to the colonies, uh, and which of the islands they went to. So Barbados, Jamaica. 
Um, and in, 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 in the fullness of time, what we would like to do, given the appropriate resources, is to fill in the detail of every individual. Of every individual. Because we Gosh. all know that names are important yes. and family history yes. is very important. Uh, and the fact that these... Th that these are real people and they actually yes. existed here. Yes. They're not just names from a, a yes. fiction, but yes. they're real people who yes. really suffered. Yes. Uh, in the belief that they were doing the right thing. Yes. You know. Um, well, uh, I would definitely advise people to come along. You know, if you're in Somerset and you're looking for something to do and, and you like a bit of history and you don't mind a little walk as well, you can go from the church, which it's only a sort of 15 minute walk to the actual site, the battlefield, where you'll see the uh, memorial to the battle and get a sense of what went on. And of course, as you stand in the church, you realize that here you are with some of those people who were deported yes. uh, or hung, and nastily hung from trees and all sorts of places as Judge Jeffries was trying to send a message home on behalf of the king that you don't mess with them. A, a, a fairly pivotal battle. Well, we, yes, we believe so, because we be, believe quite strongly here that as a result of the battle, the reprisals which you've, just meant, which you've just mentioned actually alienated much of the West Country uh, and the rest of the country as well. Not only that, but James, who had Catholic leanings, seemed to uh, reinforce his Catholic interests. Yes. And combining those two together led the country at large to say, well, perhaps we don't want him as king. And so William yes, of Orange yes. was invited and the rest is history. Yes. Um, so the argument goes that were it not for the Battle of Sedgemoor and its consequences, William and, William and Mary might not have acceded, come to the throne. Yes. And the whole events subsequently would have, might have changed. So although it was only a, a you know, I say only a six hour battle, um, it, it had significant importance. So do come, look at the exhibition, uh, learn the history, find out all about the characters and a big thanks to you, George, okay, for uh, talking to us and good luck with the, uh, the continuing of it and the, all the extra bits that you're going to do. In another video, I shall have a, a little stroll up to the battlefield so you can see what it looks like to give you a little bit more information of how easy and accessible it is so that when you do come, you can, uh, you can take that little stroll yourself. So from me here in Western Zoyland with George Keith, thanks so much and I'll see you on the next one. Till then, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>